So with the release of Dark Phoenix and the Disney merger with Fox going ahead, we've just seen the last Fox X-Men movie. It probably should have been Logan. Hi, my name is Lucian Denner and with the release of Dark Phoenix, I just I had to talk about it. And I said, since it's kind of a mixed uh, movie, I'm going to do a compliment sandwich, which is I'll start off reviewing something very good. Then I'll completely crap on the movie in the middle. And then I'll finish the review with something positive. So let's get started. So to start off with a positive. The cast. Michael Fassbender. James McAvoy. Both brilliant. They both brought their A game. As they have done with all the other three movies in the series. Jennifer Lawrence is. She kind of. She phones in a bit. But she's she's still nosebly there. But then you get. People have been saying that. Um, Sophie Turner really really carries this movie. I have to disagree. I. I don't think she's a good actress, even when she plays Sansa Stark, never liked her. I find that she plays Jean Grey the exact same way she plays Sansa Stark, which is extremely wooden, and I don't really like um, Sophie Turner as an actress. This movie was originally supposed to come out back in November of 2018, but then due to re rewrites and reshooting the movie, it got pushed back to February 2019. It's been common knowledge now that the train sequence at the end of the movie was not originally supposed to be there. That they wanted to have a big space battle. But then I'm assuming because of Captain Marvel coming out in 2019. March 2019. They said it's a bit similar. People might be fed up and didn't want to see another space battle. So they switched it to putting it on a moving train. Which we got to see in the end product of the movie. It's, I did enjoy the train scene. But I, I kind of want to see what the space battle would look like. Just because it would have been completely different from what we've seen in the X-Men universe. Because we've seen stuff on trains and buses and everything in the X-Men universe something different would have been nice to see on their last movie. Throughout the movie we barely get to see the mutants use their powers even Jean Grey who is the title character of the Dark Phoenix barely uses the Phoenix Force at all you never even get to see her turn into the big Phoenix until the very end when it's in the sky but even you, no one uses their powers much you kind of glimpse of it like even Jennifer Lawrence whose power is shapeshifting other people you see Mystique turn into one person once and it's it is just clearly it's just Jennifer Lawrence and just like in X-Men Apocalypse you can really really tell Jennifer Lawrence does not want to be there Quicksilver has one memorable scene in the entire movie and then that was the first act and they push him off and you don't even see him again for the last couple of minutes of the movie and Professor X is so poorly written that you really don't like his character at all and whenever he's on screen doing whatever he's doing you're just like why would you do this we've seen you in the future we've seen you in the past this makes no sense for you to be doing so. And by far personally what I thought the worst element of this movie was the villain. You can say whatever you want about the MCU and how unmemorable the villains are and I have to agree. But even Malekith, the villain in Tor 2, he's a lot more memorable than these. The X-Men, in the X-Men Dark Phoenix, the villains are, they're not memorable. I can't remember what they look like, don't remember what their powers are. I remember that they're alien, that's as far as I want. I don't remember what they even wanted. I don't remember anything about them. But Malekin, I remember that he's, the way he looks, his plan, and that he was played by Doctor Who. I know his name isn't Doctor Who, it's just, it's fun to say Doctor Who. And finally, to finish off our compliment sandwich, I've got to give it to the train sequence. It's, even though it is bland that we've seen train sequences and buses and trains and all that before, but as I said before in this review, we didn't really get to see them use their powers much in this movie, so seeing them actually be able to use their powers and go full out onto the um, aliens, because they're aliens you don't really care but seeing that it really made the movie worthwhile i wouldn't watch it again i wouldn't recommend it but actually seeing that because i want to see an imax 3d then seeing that train sequence on the big screen was great being able to see them all of them use their powers i just i really did enjoy seeing them use their powers overall this movie is very bland if it wasn't for the train sequence i think it'd be a lot worse and it'd be even more boring than it actually is it's if you don't follow me on Instagram, I posted something saying I'm not going to be rating my movies with a little number grade anymore. So I'm, I've got these phrases. So if you want to follow me, it's just Ushie and Downer. But I, I'd rate this movie as a torture movie. And what I mean by that is if you've seen A Clockwork Orange, you know the scene where he's being tortured. I, I, he's watching, I can't remember what he's watching, but his eyes are being held open. He's strapped to a chair and he's forced to watch it. Unfortunately, that's this kind of movie. I don't think I'd watch it again. Unless someone says, do you want to watch this? I would say no. If they really want to watch it, I would watch it with them. I wouldn't recommend it unless you're a huge X-Men fan and you're sitting at home bored. Go and see it. Thanks.